I haven't been to New York, but I've seen it. Um, and there's there's a town, two towns over from me called Asbury Park that's been pretty messy, um, which just breaks my heart, man. I mean, it um, it's 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 sad in so many ways. The anger and the emotion, I completely support getting out. Um, I just struggle with causing more hurt and destruction and pain because of it. I think that, you know, the, the means doesn't justify the end. You know, it's not, I, I, I just wish that we could figure out a better way to kind of express that kind of pain and emotion and, 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 and that, that's been suppressed. So, um, so yeah, it's been a sad one. It's been a real sad one. It hasn't been right in my backyard, but it's been close enough to, to, to hear about it, read about it and say, okay, this fire is burning close to us. This is Crisis Cast 2020 with me, Toby Goodman, a podcast where I get timely wisdom from experts in life and business. These guests will answer my five questions, sharing wisdom and insights to help you and me get through this global shitstorm. Today on Crisis Cast 2020, two-time Ironman, former soccer pro and now leadership performance coach, Matt Chavlovich joins me from his home in New Jersey to discuss his experience of the pandemic, how he's found quiet space despite having two kids home from school, where he's finding positive lessons and how he's planning to turn the world of children's books upside down. Before we start the show, I have something for you if you identify as pod curious. It's perfect for you if you're an expert, consultant or business owner. Maybe you're wondering if podcasting is worth the effort, especially now, or perhaps you've tried podcasting in the past but have been disappointed with the results. In this free guide, Podstar, I'll share the exact seven steps we use to help publish over 2,000 podcasts each month. To get instant access, go to podcastnetworksolutions.com. Matt Chavlovich, welcome to Crisis Cast. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, sir. Amazing to be here. Ah, So um, you're based in New Jersey. I've not spoken with anyone from New Jersey. I've only spoken with people who are in Manhattan who left Manhattan. Um, So... I think you stayed there throughout the pandemic. Tell me about your experience so far on a local level. What's been going on? No, you, I mean, you hit it on the head. I mean, New York has kind of been a ghost town and they have been all migrating to New Jersey, to Delaware, to Connecticut, to kind of everywhere they could. So a lot of, a lot of uh, New York plates driving around New Jersey right now. I'm about 45 minutes from the city, right along the uh, the shore. And so... It has been a destination spot for a lot of people that have been at ground zero, which really New York has been. And how did that unfold? I mean, what, was there a, was where, there a moment where you realized that the whole of uh, Manhattan were going to come come get you? Or <laughs> pretty much, they uh, pretty much. I mean, in serious on the weekends. I mean, I live so close to the beach. There's just no place to walk. There's no place to park. I mean, it is just crowds everywhere. And you look around and and you kind of say, wait a minute. I think we're, I thought we we're in a pandemic, but it's almost like when people are outside of their normal circumstances, they forgot a little bit and kind of like they left that back at, uh, at the ranch when they, when they pulled out. So, um, so yeah, it's been, it's been crowds everywhere. It's been a little bit overwhelming. So me and my family, which includes two little ones, have just been hunkering down, to be honest. We live two blocks from the beach and we've been there three times. So all summer so it's not been our normal our normal stay wow and you're normally there like every day almost every day if not like every evening at least and stuff just kind of taking in the sunset taking in the waves yeah so it's definitely been a change okay and so tell me about you know we're, we're september 8th now so when i started this adventure in podcasting it was very much a panic and no one knew what was coming no no one knew what was gonna how it was gonna unfold and and we're we're still in the middle of watching various things unfold but i think we've all adjusted a little bit so tell me from a personal perspective how you managed the unfolding and and what that looked like for you oof i would say that's been more of an onion peel kind of been peeling back right yeah. I mean, it's it's managed the chaos at first 
It's um, hold on to certain hope that this will um, be a month or two journey, but things will go back. And then kind of every day, things were changing. And so what I would say was the unfolding and really kind of where the, where the turn came for me was when I really started to create my own opinions on what was going on and really kind of let go of all the information that was being pushed out. I think that early on, I realized that no one knew what the hell was going on, what the hell to expect, what the hell to meant to this meant. And, um, and the minute I kind of let go that there were experts out there and kind of surrender to the fact that we're facing something that nobody's ever faced before. Um, I could start really taking my power back in, in a sense. And, and I say that individually, I say that for our family. I mean, we could start making decisions that, Hey, we don't know what tomorrow looks like. So we're going to do the best we can with what we have here. We're not going to depend on other people to tell us what's safe and what's not. And, um, and that changed. I mean, I think that gave us a, gr- a real grounding. And then, and as I said, really kind of gave us our power back. So, um, and then we just kind of settled in, settled into a routine, kind of what we do. Yeah. And I suppose because of where you are and because of, um, what's going on over, over the bridge, um, and, and down the road from you, it was different anyway. So, so you were reacting to the fact that there were strangers in your town from the get go, right? Oh, completely. I mean, it was, it was intense. And the biggest thing that really kind of was intense was the inconsistency of what, what people were doing and how serious they were taking it. I mean, in one instance, you know, families like me were hunkering down. I mean, we weren't spending time with anybody but each other. And then two doors down, you know, they are having dinner parties and, and whatnot. And it was a it was an interesting time to to not be too judgmental, but to also be like, wait a minute, like what what should be going on? Um, but it was a real opportunity to kind of say, look, this is how we're going to operate in the world, and that works for us. And you know, you operate your way. Um, so it was uh, it was an interesting one. I will say, mid mid summer, um, our neighbors. Uh, came by and we had a we had a drink distance drink for a little while and they were probably about fifty five and the next morning my six year old wakes up and says can we have another play date with the neighbors so even his uh, his kind of metric on what was normal and uh, kind of got skewed he wanted to hang out with my fifty five year old neighbors yeah it's it's funny uh, just going out into the world in the last month or so for us over here in the UK and. This restaurants have opened up a bit and stuff. And on the same day, it, like two things happened to me that, or two, two people said stuff to me that was completely opposite. Like I, I met a woman in um, the playground who's, who's a parent, a mother of, of another kid. And I hadn't seen her and I recognized her, you know, how are you doing? And she said, Oh yeah, I'm okay. You know, being, being good. I've been working throughout. And I said, Oh, you know what, what, what she do? And she said, oh, I work in a care home. And I said, all right, how's that been? And she works in a care home a couple of miles down the road from here. And she said, well, put it this way, in the first couple of weeks of lockdown, we started with 110 residents and, and in two weeks we had 55. <sighs> I'm like, yeah, exactly my response. And in a playground, I wasn't expecting that kind of response. And, I, you know, are you okay? And she said, you know, yeah, we're in a mess and that's, that's some major trauma. Right. And, and, and I'm just thinking, right. Any of my challenges around not being able to play music this month have just been put into context, but, but then, but then the very same evening went to pick up some takeout, what you guys would call you know, the curbside pickup thing. And, uh, there's a guy who like pushes in front of the queue and, you know, just have the conversation. Hey man, you know, I'm in the queue and he's like, Oh no, you know, uh, I'm different. I'm in a different queue. And I'm like, you're not in a different queue. And then, and then I said, and even then, you know, why are you so close to me? And he just, he, he said straight away, Oh, no, what you think this virus exists? You know, I'm like, I don't know, but I did just meet somebody who knew 55 people that died. And, you know, I didn't say that to him, but you think, man, I don't know. And it's, um, Another friend of mine said, who lives in Austin, he said, I, I suppose you just got to assume that the gun's loaded. 
even if it isn't. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that. I, I, it's just so fascinating how people react to different things and what they choose to kind of hear and not hear. Um, I had a similar experience. A, a friend of mine was trying to figure out, should he send his child to school? They, I guess they had the option. And he was really hemming and hawing for about a week. And I said to him, are you okay if she gets sick? And he said, oh, huh, that's an interesting way to look at it. <laughs> and I was like, wait, how have you been looking at it? But, you know, it was like they were weighing the risk, but they weren't weighing um, the outcomes, you know. And uh, and that's what I find a lot of people doing. Um, yeah, it's uh, what's going to be fascinating to me is how long it takes us, if ever, do we go back to shaking hands? Do we go back to, you know, kissing women on the cheek as a hello? Um, and, and, you know, it's, I think it's going to be years before we end up doing that. But to your point, the trauma and the experience, I think, is, is unfortunately going to really have a ripple effect for a while. I mean, that, that's one thing that broke my heart, really, when things were, you know, people were dying by the thousands was just not even being able to be by their bedside and things happening so quick. So there, there's very much kind of like a, a war trauma, I think that will unfortunately kind of be with people for a while. So, um, yeah. And, and I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say not to, I mean, get too deep, but to get too deep, I mean, it's really one thing I've constantly tried to promote, which is great. This is equalizing us. This is connecting all of us. So how about, we lean into the other equalizer and connection, which is love. Like how about we actually show love for each other and not just be talking about all this other stuff and all this other energy, put some different energy out there. Yeah. Nice. So, it's been different, man. It's been different. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely been different. Um, tell me then, uh, you know, you, you're someone who, who works with a lot of people, helps, helps people as a coach. What, what kinds of things other than just helping give people context and, and perspective in general, have you, have people been asking you similar questions? Have you, have you come up with a way to, to help your, your clients particularly through this time? One of the, one of the biggest things, and, and it, it's true in my life as much as anyone's that people are bringing to the table is, is the same challenge that they've, been dealing with their whole life and yet they haven't faced it and so what this lockdown what this intensity has done is it's really shined a light on gaps and weaknesses and challenges that people have oh have traditionally been more too distracted um had other outlets to kind of not deal with those things and now it's putting in their face and I find that a lot with my clients. I find it a lot in my life too, where I'm like, oh, we got to deal with this. And, and, and that's the biggest thing I've helped clients realize is they're like, oh man, I, um, my spouse and I have a big communication gap. We're just not seeing eye to eye during COVID. Okay. Did you ever see eye to eye and communicate well? Or, you know, work is really draining to me. Okay. Was it ever not that way? Right. And, and so I think the biggest thing is I'm, I'm, it's a great clean out time where people are dealing with and facing the things that they've always put off. And so that's kind of been a lot of my work and a lot of what I've been bringing to the table with people is, is really the reckonings that they, uh, that they haven't had the balls to face. And I think that they're going to come out cleaner and, and, and just more pure and more centered and more grounded. And they have, um, it just, they were forced into the process a little bit. Yeah. I think that's, that's true for almost everyone I know in a way. And, and, and some people have either been um, trying to bury their head in the sand or, or actively been dealing with stuff, um, whether it's professional or personal or both. Has there been anything specific that, that you've done? Have you, have you started something new? A lot of people have new habits around reading and watching and learning and the, the general self-improvement thing um, has come up a lot for me and and um and a lot of people i work with they're, they're very focused on a specific method or book or something that something that they've had time for that they wouldn't have had time for before because their routine's been jerked yeah um, so so what about you i know and also having said that we're both in the same situation that we've got 
we've got kids, so maybe we've had less time than we had before. <laughs> That's the truth. And that was an interesting um, emotional journey for me because early on, when the world kind of slowed down, as people put it, I had big visions that I was going to, I mean, write books and do all these things that I hadn't been able to do. And like you just said, I said, hold on. I mean, I had so so much less time than I usually have, less quiet time, creative time. And um, so there was a month or two where I was really frustrated. I mean, just, hey, I'm going to get this done this week and <laughs> none of it even close. So, um, which would parlay into your question, which I would say the biggest thing that I've leaned into is, um, is meditation, I would say, um, and really kind of simple, quiet time. Um, I go to the beach every morning at about five o'clock. I do a stream of consciousness writing just to get all these thoughts out of me and just kind of take in, take in my scenery and meditate a little bit. And that kind of has provided a grounding for anything that comes. And I think a lot of people know that one, but for me, it was, it was kind of a surrendering to, um, to really get my feet on the ground in the morning and then let whatever else come and come from, and it allowed me to come from real grounded, grounded and tenful intention based space. So, yeah, man. I mean, a lot of people know that one, but a lot of people don't do it. So the fact that you've been doing it is, then that's the difference. And you knew that before you did it, but to get into it, I, I definitely could see, you know, my physical, uh, my ability to, you know, move around had been physically impacted. I couldn't go out and play gigs, which is, which is a way of getting some level of physical exercise, even when it's just picking up instruments and carrying them through, <laughs> you know, venues, not necessarily playing them. All of that stops and you're thinking, oh, you know, there's the, I just can't get into it. And I, and I suddenly found cycling again. So that's been like, my thing has just been like, get on my bike and, you know, started doing five miles and then sort of doing about around 10 miles a day and that really helps with an audio book in in one ear quietly you know loud enough to hear but quiet enough to hear the traffic and mainly going down lanes and stuff but that getting into that habit and pushing through especially as the weather's got colder making sure that I still do it because otherwise it as a father with two very noisy children it it's tough to to focus but i i think the other thing that's come from it is it's the power of constraint isn't it if you know that you're going to get the quiet time at 5 a.m or doing whatever you do you you do more with with less time 100 percent. and is biking new for you are you re like, like getting close to it again or are you just just discovering it Oh man, so I, I used to do it as a kid all the time. And I right. probably stopped around 17 when I started to drive. Right. And it was something that I did with my dad. It was the way that I had a relationship with my dad when I was younger. And, and yeah. we used to do that on weekends. So it was something I'm, I always did a lot of when I was a kid. And um, so I knew that I in, inherently had. Yeah, you, know, you know, I'm not scared of riding a bike and I could do it, but it's been a long time since I've done it properly. Yeah. And so to get back on it is is been great. And one of the things that's come from that is that I've been able to go out and ride with with my elder son, who's six and a half, and he's off his stabilizers and we're going in the woods and having little three mile bike rides together and stuff. So yeah, it's that's been that's been fantastic and something that's happened. My car lease, I've probably said this before as well on this podcast, but my car lease fortunately run out in, in May, June. And it was like, Oh great. I don't have a car to pay for and I don't have anywhere to drive anywhere. So, so again, probably those times where I may well have just driven to the shops for a couple of minutes, I'll cycle now for 10 or something, you know? So, so it's, yeah. it's good. It's, it, it, and I think that's one of the points I was trying to make is it's, such a been a period of reconnection to kind of what really um, grounds you and what really gives you energy. And I think a lot of people like you with cycling, like me with just quiet time in the morning, sitting on the, sitting on the beach um, and writing, that's another big part of my world. Uh, it's allowed us to reconnect to that, you know? And, and I think I can tell you for me, I did it out of necessity. I mean, because the days were so chaotic and so just kind of um, inconsistent 
that I needed that stability. And, um, and I realized early, I got to find it at 5 a.m. And that just is what it is. Um, and so back to kind of taking charge and taking control of you grounding yourself before you go out into the world. That's basically what I found. It sounds like what you found. And I think a lot of people have, which is, which is going to serve for a long time. Yeah. And that's for me, the, the other side of it is much more about, you know, no one knows what the other side looks like. If we're there, if it's going to be, you know, these, these peaks and these second lockdowns and all of that stuff that's happening. If I can keep the habits, the good, healthy habits that I've got, you know, throughout this and beyond this, then, then I'm a better person on the other side of it. Completely. And, and I mean, there's so much cleaning out that you're going to be left with just what matters to you. And whether it's habits that existed already in your world or new ones created, I mean, I, I think it's going to absolutely serve you. And I, I, I communicate that with a, with a heavy heart a little bit because it kind of, I don't want people to think that I'm just overlooking and discrediting all the pain and suffering that people are experiencing. Um, but at the end of this, there is going to be a lot of good. There's no doubt for, hmm. for, for just, you know, how we communicate, how we interact where we spend our time. I just think that relationships are falling by the wayside and then they're also being created very strongly because of this. And um, so, yeah, I, I think that it will serve a lot of people in a lot of ways. Um, just unfortunately, we had to walk over some hot coals to get there. So, yeah. And are still, are still, I mean, that's the biggest question is when is it safe to go outside again? Yeah, right. That's the, that's the big one, so. And in terms of where you are in the world, has there been any rioting or any of that kind of stuff going on where you are? There has. Um, I mean, I haven't been to New York, but I've seen it. Um, and there's there's a town, two towns over from me called Asbury Park that's been pretty messy, um, which just breaks my heart, man. I mean, it um, it's 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 sad in so many ways. It's uh the anger and the emotion I completely support getting out. Um, I just struggle with causing more hurt and destruction and pain because of it. I think that, you know, the, the means doesn't justify the end. You know, it's not, I, I, I just wish that we could figure out a better way to kind of express that kind of pain and emotion and, 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 and that, that's been suppressed. So, um, so yeah, it's been a sad one. It's been a real sad one. It hasn't been, right in my backyard, but it's been close enough to, to, to hear about it, read about it and say, okay, this fire is burning close to us. So. Yeah, no doubt. And I feel the same way. I'm definitely in a kind of leafy, relatively well-behaved suburb of London. So I haven't seen it, but you know, again, yeah, same, same position, I think. Um, so m- moving on to, to the business side of, of life, um, what, what's changed, what's changed there or, or what's accelerated there because, because of lifestyle change? Obviously the, uh, the mastering of zoom, everyone's zoom, uh, you know, zoom capable now, which, which also I think is a mass is a positive change. A lot of people kind of, I think are going to create technical skills that they didn't have before out of necessity. So whether it's children or adults and whatnot, um, in the business side, I've been doing a lot more groups and shorter things to just provide support for people. I think there's a lot of confusion on where people can go for a different perspective, where people mm-hmm. can go for some different energy. And so I pretty much just using all my outlets and as much as my network to say, look, here's a safe place. When, when all that energy and everything you're going through is becoming too much, come over here. Um, we're talking about different things. We're challenging thinking. We're, you know, we're inspiring to do good versus just sit and wallow. So there's a community over here. And so that's been, um, that's went more rapidly than I expected versus kind of the one-on-one client um, grind, I would say. Uh, it's been more just kind of grabbing groups of people together and saying, hey, let's, uh, let's make some good out of this. So it's been a, it's been a, it's been a good, I've been running more two and three month 
pro coaching programs, uh, community programs than, uh, than I anticipate at the beginning of the year. That's very good. And what, what focus do each of those, do those groups have a common thread or? A lot of it. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of it really comes around clarity and, um, empowerment and confidence. I mean, confidence becomes the result of the clarity and empowerment. And as I talked about earlier on, there's just so much stripping down and kind of letting go at this period of time. So helping people get in touch with who they are, what matters, what really matters to them, what they want to stand for, and then creating strategies for them to do that, creating kind of challenging their thinking for ways to do that um, so that they don't go out in the world like a victim, you know, and they go out in the world empowered. That's kind of the biggest thing. A lot of people have one, one thing I always ask them is what's the biggest thing you're struggling with right now? And they communicate a lack of confidence and certainty that it's going to be okay, what to expect, what not. And, you know, I talk to them, well, that's a result. That's a result of what matters to you, of knowing what matters to you, knowing how you want to show up in the world. So let's focus on that and you will get the certainty and confidence. And it's, uh, it's been really rewarding. It's, it really has. Good man. And so what's, what's been the sort of standout impressive moments from from people and and things to come come from all this for me and my business and specifically or just kind of humanity as a whole where are we going both ways let's go both ways let's do that um i'll start me specifically i mean i had one client that she's a business owner she's a single mom and she's also funny and wacky as hell and she was living three very different lives. She had very different profiles socially, whatnot. And we kind of, we worked on her being one person out in the world. So the true, the true person out in the world. And since, I mean, we had that discussion in March or April. She's tripled her business. She's in a new relationship that's on a different level than she's ever experienced. And she's consider an influencer, I guess is what the word is. I mean, it has like million, literally over a million people follow her on social media. So when she opens her mouth, people listen. And it was all a matter of her being one person in the world versus all these different personas. And, um, and it's just exploded. So that's been so rewarding because I always saw that in her and, and the fact that she took that leap has been incredible. Um, just showing up as her every day. Um, and look, I mean, as humanity, I spoke to it. I think that it's really changing how people relate, changing people, how people, um, what they are actually are making important when they're not, some people are slower to get with it, um, and kind of go there. But I think the people that are open to change are really realizing the things that matter to them, taking time for the things that fill them with energy fill them with love. And I think that's just going to really give them some new habits and strategies to live from. I love that. <laughs> so what's, what's next for you now that you've adjusted? <gasps> now what the, there's two, there's probably two things that are kind of in my sights. I would say, um, I don't want to put a time frame on it. That's where I really kind of <laughs> get screwed up. Um, one of them is, is building a real high end community. Um, of leaders. One thing that this pandemic that I've seen is it's, it's exposed people in prominent positions and their weakness of leadership. And people think that just titles um, mean those people are good leaders. And they also sometimes fall back and say, since I don't have a certain title or I'm not in a certain position, I can't lead. And I, and, and I want to flip that on, on its head. And I love working with leaders. I'm a natural born leader myself, always been in those positions. So I want to cultivate a community of leaders and kind of challenge them to step in and step up in ways they never have. Um, and that can be simple as how they lead their family, how they lead their sports teams, how they lead the organizations, doesn't matter. But how can you lead differently from the heart, from intent, from purpose, so that you're making a positive impact? Um, so that's a big thing that um, I'm, gonna, I'm basically kind of enrolling and cultivating to start in December and, and kind of um, be a multi-year program. So more longer term community stuff. 
Um, and then the other thing is I'm, I'm working on a, a children's book series for adults, children's book for adults, which I'm excited about. Um, some of the simplest lessons really can be written for a child, but then really kind of change our world. And I know that I've, I've had a couple of those moments reading to my six or four year old. I'm like, Oh, that is a great point that I forgot. Or that is a great lesson. I'm glad they're learning. I need to relearn. And so adding to that, um, is something I'm, I'm excited about. So starting that. That's incredible. Uh, I didn't know that about you, but that's, that's really good. And I, again, I suppose I've always read to my kids, but it's been definitely much more of a moment because you have to carve up the days when, when they've been at home for so long, you recognize the value of the, the bedtime read is even more valuable than it was when they, uh, previously when they were going to all their various swimming clubs and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, you think, okay, you know, this is this is cool. This is the section that happens between bath time and sleep, and and um, I suppose I've just paid uh, I've paid more attention to the content of the books I've been reading out loud, <laughs> and maybe the, maybe you have too, by the sounds of it. Completely, completely. I mean, and look, content as a whole is kind of getting shorter but more frequent. Right. And I think that there's truth to that in books as well. I don't know that people are diving into these 300, 500 page books anymore. And there's a lot of power if you can just kind of tell a powerful story in 10 to 50 pages. And, um, and that's what I've been falling in love with, both with my kids, both personally. Um, and that's what I want to kind of put out in the world more often. So, yeah, I can't agree more. Tell me about the books that you've been enjoying um, for yourself? Um, a lot of them have been, uh, been around, they have been around growth and just expansive thinking. I mean, I got a couple and a couple right here. Another Brit, Jamie Smart wrote a great one called Clarity, um, that I just finished up. Um, and, uh, I've been getting into, I've been getting into martial artists too. Um, the way of the warrior and kind of um, mastery. Uh, I think both on a personal level and from a coaching standpoint, that's, that's very uh, prominent and kind of what I try to bring to the table is mastery of a craft. And so kind of studying other th- disciplines and people that have mastered things, um, the ways that they have mastered it is kind of what I've been digging into. So and specifically it's been around samurai and, and um, martial arts. Yeah, a lot of lessons to be taken from that stuff, seemingly. Um, And I think you and I both enjoy working with people who are actually mastered and are technically good at a thing before they come and get our help versus perhaps other other coaches who coach coaches to coach coaches that coach. You know, there's a lot of that. Um, So it's wonderful to um, it's wonderful to work with people who have that core technical skill set, even if they've moved away from it. Um, as we've spoken about before, we, we've spoken about harnessing the power that you've had as a sports professional, but moving it because it's a credible thing that, that you, you did successfully, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, that's great, man. That's great. So, um, where can, where can people connect with you? Um, on all the usual, uh, social media outlets, Matt Chavlovich, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, all those, um, you can hit on my website, which is called today. I begin.com. Um, there's contact info on there and, uh, or they can come through your channels, brother. Yeah, man. Well, yeah. I'm sure they, I'm sure they'll be flooding through. Um, thank you so much for your time, man. This was incredible, brother. I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. You too, mate. See you soon. All right, mate. Peace. This episode of Crisis Cast 2020 was produced by me in London and Kate Astrakhan in Michigan, with artwork by Ryan Field and sound design by Lee Turner. Crisis Cast 2020 is a production from Podcast Network Solutions, a full service podcast production company who are ready to help you plan, record, produce, and promote your message with podcasting. To find out more and grab your copy of Podstar if you're feeling Pod curious, visit us 
at podcastnetworksolutions.com.